TLS. Today I'll be showing you how to get TLS encryption on all your sites for free without having to pay for any domain names and without having to pay for any certificates. So no more of these nasty unsecured connections and the best part about this you can do this also on your local network so you can secure your local website. So if you're like me and you happen to have a lot of web admin interfaces and you don't want to be looking at those pesky IP addresses on unsecured connections, you can convert them to a nice clean crispy HTTPS URLs. So basically what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating our own root certificate authority and we're going to use that authority to create our own certificates which we can hand down to our website and then we can import the certificate authority to our browser so then our browser can trust the website. So if you're new to certificates or you don't know how they work and this all sounds like gibberish to you then please allow me two minutes to explain to you how certificates work so you're going to have some basic understanding of how things work and what we're going to be doing today. And if you already know how certificates work and you don't need my help then please feel free to skip around I'm going to leave timestamps. So let's start with the theory. This is your web browser right here. Um, this is a website that they're trying to access. How does your browser know this website it is who it claims to be? How does it know that the identity of the website has not been changed or the website is not just a clone that's using the same URL and uh, trying to steal your data? So this is where the certificates come in. And the most basic explanation of certificates, you can think about them like private keys. So each certificate is completely unique. It gets generated by using computer entropy and can be used to define an identity. And this identity can be used to identify anything. So you can attach the certificate with your email to identify who you are, and or you can attach the certificate to a software to, so to sign the software so you can know the publisher the actual publisher. In this case, we're using it to website so we can actually know that the website it is who it claims to be. All right, so let's say this website DuckDuckGo now has its own certificate and it can send this certificate to our browser. And this certificate is completely unique that if somebody tries to impersonate this website, they won't be able to recreate the certificate unless of course they steal the certificate as well. But usually these certificates are either password protected or they are hidden in some vault somewhere. And they also have an expiration date. So the certificate needs to be renewed and needs to be trusted by your browser. But this is not enough. Why? Because then anybody is going to be able to make their own certificates. And if anybody can make their own certificate and give it to your browser and your browser is going to automatically trust it, then this is not a valid system because if somebody's going to try to impersonate DuckDuckGo, the they're going to just be able to make their own certificate and send it to our browser and then our browser can trust it. And that creates a problem. So this is where certificate authorities come in. What certificate authority basically is, it's a third party authority that both the website trust and your browser trust. And what happens now, instead of this website automatically creating their own certificate, they're going to make a certificate signing request and they're going to send that to the certificate authority. And then what the certificate authority is going to do, in theory, they're going to look at the certificate and then they're going to look at the website details and they're going to be like, yep, this website is legit. It is who it claims to be and it's the actual owner. So then they're going to sign the certificate and hand it down back to the website. So now when this website sends a certificate to your browser, your browser is going to trust that certificate because it's signed by the certificate authority. But how does your browser know it's signed by the certificate authority? Your browser is going to have a copy of the certificate authority. So then it can use the certificate authority to validate this website certificate and check if it's actually being signed by the actual certificate authority. And we can actually take a look at that right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open the browser. And for this example, I'm going to go to DuckDuckGo. And if we click on the lock icon, we click on show more information, view certificate. We're going to see all the certificate information and the business information. So for example, we can see this business is in the US and this is the state that it's in and the URL for that business, including all the subdomains. And here we see the issuer name. So this is the certificate authority that has signed this website certificate. And this one happened to be DigiCert. And we can also see right here the expiration date for this certificate and some more information such as the public key. What is this uh, key used for? So it's used for key encipherment and digital signature and some more nice handy details about the certificate. And if you want, you can manually download the certificate 
and we can look at the certificate itself and you can look at the actual certificate chain so we can inspect this in a third party program and see what that actually contains and now we can take a look at all the certificate authorities that our web browser is already trusting so if i go to settings search for certificates click on view certificates and under authorities this is all the certificate authorities that our web browser automatically trust so any website signed by any of these authorities our browser will automatically trust and is going to be able to make a secure connection to that so here if we search for digicert here we can see the certificate authority that signed this website is already imported in our browser so any website has been signed by this certificate authority our browser will automatically trust so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating our own certificate authority and we're going to import that to the browser and then we're going to use the same certificate authority to sign a certificate for our website so let's get to the good stuff let's get to the technicals first thing first we're going to need a website so we're going to have something to test on i'm going to be using docker so i can get an nginx image and use that to have a basic easy website so i'm going to run sudo docker run slash d for detached slash p for port i'm going to have port 80 to port 80 and then also going to have port 443 to port 443 i'm going to give it a name i'm just going to name this website and um, then the image is going to be nginx i'm going to press enter give it a password nice and done so let's find the ip address for that container so i'm going to run sudo docker network inspect bridge and here we can see this container named website has this ip address so if i copy this put it to the browser now we have a website but obviously as you can see it's not secure it doesn't have any certificate and our browser does not trust it all right now that we have a website up and running let's start working on certificates so i'm going to open a new terminal and first thing first i'm going to make a new directory i'm going to name this search so everything is nice and clean i'm going to go inside that directory so we're going to start by making our own root certificate authority and to do that we're going to need a private key we're going to use the private key to encrypt this root certificate authority so for the entirety of the process we're going to be using open ssl OpenSSL should handle everything from creating certificates to creating private keys to encrypting them, decrypting them, and so on. So make sure that you have OpenSSL already installed on your system. It should come pretty much installed on most Linux distros, and if you don't, it's probably going to be available in your distros repo. So we're going to start by making the private keys. So I'm going to have OpenSSL GenRSA-DES3-out, and then the key name, I'm going to name this root ca.key. And then the size, I'm going to use 2048, that's the standard. I'm going to press enter. It's going to ask you for a password, give it a secure password. And this is important because you're going to be using this key to be able to access your root CA. So now we've created the key, we're going to be using the key to create the root CA. So I'm going to type in OpenSSL, rdq x509 new nodes key. And this is going to be the private key that you just created dash sha256 dash days and that's the validity of your root ca i'm going to put 365 for one year dash out and this is going to be the root ca name i'm just going to name this root ca.pem the only thing that you need to make sure of that the file name has the correct extension you can name the file whatever you want just make sure it ends with the correct extension i'm going to press enter it's going to ask you for the passphrase for the private key i'm going to put in mine and then it's going to ask you to fill in some information. You can leave this blank, you can fill it in, it's up to you. This is the information you're going to see when you're going to inspect the certificates. I'm just going to type in US, New York. I'm going to leave this empty. Company name, I'm going to name this based. Tech, LTD. Unit name, I'm going to leave this empty. Your name or FQDM, I'm going to name this based. Email, I'm going to leave it empty. And now we're done. Sweet, so we've in LS. We're going to have our own root CA. And it's going to have its own private key and we're going to be using this private key all the time to access this root ca so since this root ca is encrypted with a private key which is locked behind a password nobody's going to be able to use this root ca to generate and sign certificates except you so now that we have our own root ca we're going to import that to our browser so i'm going to open the browser go to settings search certificates make sure you're under authorities and then i'm going to click import and then i'm going to choose my certificate which is called root ca.pem and since this has the correct file extension our browser is going to automatically detect it. And then I'm going to check these boxes to trust the CA. Click OK. And we are done. Now let's start generating the website on certificate. So again, we're going to start by making the private key. We're going to have an open SSL, generrsa, dash out. 
and give this a name. I'm just gonna name it website dot key and then give it the size 2048. Sweet, now we have a key. And obviously if you want, you can also encrypt this key with a password, but then it will make the process a bit more complicated because you're gonna to need to tell your web server to unlock this key somehow, which is not that hard, but I'm gonna leave it with no password since this is just a demo. Now we're gonna create a certificate sign-in request. So then we can hand the sign-in request to our RUCA to sign it. So I'm gonna type in open SSL, req for request, dash new, dash key, and then I'm gonna choose the key that I've created for that website dash out so we generate the certificate sign request which i'm going to name website .csr, which stands for certificate sign request so i was going to ask you to fill in information again and this information is going to be specific to that website so i'm going to fill this in i was going to ask you for a password i'm not going to fill it in i'm just going to leave it empty since this is just a demo option common name going to leave empty and we're done Sweet, so now we're gonna to need to generate one more file before we sign that certificate. And this file needs to be generated manually. So I'm gonna name this website.ext and I'm gonna leave this in the description. You can just copy paste them. The only thing that you need to worry about is the DNS and change this to whatever DNS name that you have for that website. So if you bought a domain name, put the domain name in here. If you didn't buy a domain name, you can put whatever domain in there and then create a manual DNS entry in your system to access that domain. For me, I'm not going to use a public domain name for this project since I'm just going to use this locally. So I'm going to create my own manual DNS entry and I'll show you how to do that. So if you're creating manual DNS entry, this can be pretty much wherever. I'm just going to type in basedtech.lol. Save and quit. Now we have all the files that we need. Let's start signing our certificate. So for the last and final command, I'm going to type in OpenSSL x519 dash req dash in for a sign request and for me it's going to be website.csr dash ca for the certificate authority i'm going to put mine in dash ca key for the certificate authority key dash ca create serial dash out for the actual certificate i'm going to name mine website.crt dash days how long is going to be valid for i'm going to put 365 so for one year dash sha 256 and then dash exe file and then put in the exe file that we've just created so i'm going to choose that one press enter it's going to ask you for the root ca key i'm going to put mine in nice and done so now if i type in ls let's see what we have in here we have the root ca we have the root ca key and then we have the website certificate we have the sign request the exe file the website key and the sr file the most important files that you need to worry about in here is the root ca of course and ski and the website sign certificate on this key so now that we have the website certificate and its own key let's give this keys to our web server so since mine is running in docker i'm going to copy these files to docker i'm going to use sudo docker cp i'm going to copy website dot crt to the container named website i'm going to put this in forward slash root and then i'm going to copy the key I'm going to put that there as well. Now I'm going to access that Docker container. Website bin bash. Now we're inside the Docker container. All I'm going to do is tell Nginx to use these files. So first let's check the files are there. And indeed they are. Then I'm going to go to Etsy, Nginx, conf.d. I'm going to edit the default file. All right, so in here we just need to add a few more lines to tell Nginx to use your certificates. First thing first, I'm gonna tell Nginx to listen to import 403. Then I'm gonna change the server name to the server name that I chose. So it's gonna be base tech.lol. And then I'm gonna create a new line, type in SSL space on, and then tell Nginx where our certificate files are. So I'm gonna type in SSL underscore certificate. And mine is gonna be in forward slash root, forward slash website.crt. And then I'm going to tell it where is the certificate key. So mine is going to be in forward slash root, forward slash website dot key. And then I'm going to close this, save and quit. All right, now all I got to do is restart Nginx. So I'm going to go to Etsy, init.d, Nginx, reload. Now the last thing we need to do is to tell our system where to find this domain. Because we've created the domain basetech.lol, but our system has no idea where that domain is because it's not on a public registrar. So we need to manually make a DNS entry to tell our system where to find it. 
So to do that, it's very, very easy. All you gotta do is edit the host file. You need sudo for that. So I'm gonna use sudo vim etsy host. In here, make a new line and then put in the IP address of the website. Mine's gonna be 172.17.2 and then put in the domain name for the website. So mine is gonna be basetech.lol. Basically what this is doing is just telling our system that if you wanna look for basetech.lol, it's right there. So save and exit. Now we should be done. We've created our own root CA, we import it to our browser, and then we sign the certificate and we give it to our website. And then we made a DNS entry to tell our system what the website is. So now if we open a web browser and we go to 172.17.02 and we see that nothing changed, and that's because we are still using the IP address. But now if we try to go to HTTPS base tech LOL, we can see it's nice and encrypted. So if I click on this, it's going to tell you that the connection verified by a certificate issuer that is not recognized by Mozilla. It's basically is telling you that the certificate authority has not been imported by default. And that's because we made our own certificate authority. But since it's our certificate authority, we trust it. So that's completely fine. And if I click on more information, we see it's verified by basetech.ltd. And if I click on view certificate, this is the information that we imported manually, but basically the country, state, Organization name, base tech, and common name, this can be whatever, I just name it based. Expiration date is exactly one year from now. The NS name is exactly the name that we gave it. And this is some more general information about the certificate. And the second tab right here is information about the certificate authority, not just the certificate alone. So that's about it. Now you don't have an excuse to use these nasty and secure IP addresses. Instead, you can have a nice clean encrypted URL. And you don't need to rely on anyone to create you the domain names and the certificates. So that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content in the future, then please subscribe. So that's it for me. I'm going to peace out and I hope you're going to have a wonderful day.